recorded live. Hi, Terry. Hi, Terry. Uh, Frank. Uh, yes. Is you? Did I Hi. just unmute you? I'm I'm sorry. I had to go ahead and mute everyone. Stop that uh, echoing and feedback for right now. Uh, Frank, it's just uh, one minute after nine. If you're ready to go, we'll yes. do a quick introduction. Um, could you do a quick introduction about yourself and what's been going on? And uh, this is Ucadia University call uh, information, and we have Franco Collins with us from Australia. I'll go ahead and turn it over to you, Frank. Uh, thanks very much, Terry. Uh, look, thank you, everyone, who have come on tonight. And thank you also those that will be listening to the call that can't come on now. Um, just to let everyone know that this is one a, a regular call that we are trying to make every Thursday night at the same time. So please let others know. And if you have uh, your diary, please, please, if you can have time, schedule it in. And we're more than welcome uh, to come and listen and to ask questions. There's a standard format that we have so far for these calls, and I'm hoping that um, everyone's okay that we do the same tonight. There is a lot of exciting information that has come since the last call last Thursday. So I'm going to try to keep it as close to one hour for the first part of the call. Uh, if we run over, we'll be only running over a few minutes. And then the idea is that the second hour uh, gives the opportunity for people to ask their questions and hopefully I can answer them for you in that time. Uh, again, tonight, if there are a lot of questions, because there is going to be quite a bit of exciting new information, then happy if that runs a little bit over time. But ideally, what we're trying to do is keep things to these two hours. So tonight, um, as I say, there's some very exciting new information that I want to cover with you tonight. Um, the, the points are um, who's who in the zoo of the court, uh, certainly some clarity that we can offer now, uh, even more so in terms of these roles of the trustee, the administrator and the executor of the trusts. We have um, pursued some more information in understanding uh, the origins of the SESTA KV trusts that we're dealing with and that relationship to uh, London and the date, this key date of 1540. We've also got some interesting information that is relevant uh, in terms of the concept of the two United States, uh, the one that was originally formed by the Constitution and the one that was formed in 1871 in the formation of the District of Columbia. And who is the real president and why and the relevance to us? In, in practical terms, uh, we have some updates to the use and pre preparation of an ecclesiastical deed poll and why this is, in fact, going to be even more powerful um, remedy. And for those that have actually sent a deed poll and have had uh, various responses or non-responses, I'm very keen to share with you what we're working on, which is the 100-day follow-up steps uh, to the deed poll. Really, then we leave it open to Q&A. So I'm, I'm going to start then, I guess, with the first thing that I'd like to do, which is to talk about um, Eucadia, our strategy, and answering some of the contradictions that people may be finding, both in terms of getting onto chats, blogs, and hearing uh, comments from, from other people. Let me start by, I guess, um, a answering a query that, in understanding what we're doing in terms of, of, of trying to address a massive system and massive inequalities when we talk about the Roman cult, when we talk about the bar associations, we're talking about pretty powerful forces. I have spoken on previous talk shows about uh, characters and heroes such as Martin Luther. But if we were to look at the last 490 years and ask ourselves the question, how many people have succeeded in getting rid of the Roman cult, getting rid of the system that has evolved into the bar society and the systems of control? I mean, honestly, the answer is no one. There's been a lot of brave people, a lot of brave men and women, but no one can argue that uh, anyone has been outstandingly successful. 
if it had been, well, <clears throat> the, the Roman cult wouldn't be there. So it's a sobering thought to think about if we can consider that we are in a war. And are we in a war? Are, are we in a war between good and evil, right and wrong? I, I think we are. So if we are in a war of, of good and evil, right and wrong, then are there any rules in war? Well, when you read strategies and tactics, whether it be San Tzu or Napoleon or Mao Zedong or Che Guevara or anyone that's written the text or Julius Caesar, Caesar that's written the text on war, the unanimous conclusion is there are no rules in war. That's the nature of war. So finding a war, good and evil, against an enemy that has all the assets, all the weapons, all the technology, and finding the fact that there is no rules. It is a brave man and woman that stands there and says in front of a, a, a column of tanks that uh, I'm here to stand up for truth, I'm here to stand up for uh, knowledge and for freedom, but we are also looking realistically at how we can win. So in that, we use all the strategies available to us. And one of the strategies, one of the key strategies, if one is to fight a war and succeed, is one of the first things you want to do is cut the head off the enemy. And what is the head of the enemy if we consider the enemy to be people who worship Satan, worship Lucifer, worship the occult? Who is the leader? Well, the leader is Satan. The leader is Lucifer. The leader is all those forces, whether it be Moloch or whomever. Well, what do we do in the covenant? The first thing we seek to do in this war is to cut off the head of these people who are really ultimately mentally ill but are wrapping themselves up in all this occult symbolism and dressing and claiming to worship Lucifer and Satan. I mean, they don't. I mean, they worship themselves. But that's what they claim and that's what they teach and that's what they promote in things like uh, Hollywood. So what we've done is we've cut their head off. We've, the Treaty of Lucifer, all these things that are embedded in the, in the covenant is part of the strategy of warfare. The unity of heaven and the concept of the unity of heaven deprives those that are still in Washington, those that are still in the City of London, we'll talk about it a bit later on, from the claim that they represent the powers of evil in private and then pretend to represent us in public. They don't. They only represent themselves now. What's another strategy of war? Well, another strategy of war is don't let the enemy know where you are. <clears throat> Plan accordingly. Set your time accordingly. Be proactive and let the enemy chase its tail. Well, a consequence of that, sadly, is this. When one is fighting a war and using all these assets, people will sometimes come to the conclusion because they will view things literally, they won't think in terms of strategy, they'll just take what they see and sometimes just take a fraction of what they see and say, Eukadia is disinfo. Eukadia is a false flag operation. They, they won't listen to what's being said. They won't view deeper. Even though they claim to be viewing deeper, they will treat everything that we're discussing and doing in a shallow, superficial and ignorant fashion. Well, to help you understand and help others understand that we're not doing this and I'm not doing this simply to, to bide our time and say, well, we tried like many others have tried over hundreds of years and they were too big, they were too powerful, they were too evil. We're not doing this to try. We're doing this to succeed. <laughs> we're not doing this so that it's a dry run for someone else. We're sorting this out once and for all. Enough's enough. The game is up. Learn on the shoulders of great men and women before us and finish the job. Slay the dragon. Change. Well, there is a site that I'll give you now, <clears throat> and we won't spend any more time other than this to move on to some exciting new information. But I'm going to give you a site that's worth going to have a look because it will give you an insight and it will help when you want to respond to people and they ask the question, is Franco Collins some kind of double agent or is he running some false flag and why does he have these sites that on the one hand uh, 
seem to promote the UN, but on the other side is doing other things. The side is HTTP and the normal forward thing, and then modern-warfare.org. That's two words, modern, M-O-D-E-R-N, then the hyphen, warfare, W-A-R-F-A-R-E.org. And when you get to that site, modern-warfare.org, you will find there the Eucadian Articles of War. That is, Eucadian Articles of War. Not to promote war, not to, to um, perpetuate the way the world is, but to recognise how to prosecute war, how to end the system, how to use all the resources we have to succeed. Well, <clears throat> hopefully that will answer some contradictions that people have and to understand that there is a strategy behind what we're doing. Okay, moving on. Um, I said at the beginning there that there's some exciting things I want to cover with you. Um, that is, who's who in the zoo when we uh, look at the courts, the trustee, the administrator, the executor. Uh, seeing, more, seeing more clearly um, the evidence, the machinery of the SESTA KV and the money system. Um, talking about this confusion that people have and still uncertainty as to this two United States and actually how does it work together, how they're using it together. Further clarity on the deed polls and the plan of a 100-day follow-up on what to do after you have submitted your deed poll. So I'm going to start on this question of who's who in the court, which has been a continuation of our discussions in the last few talk shows on the role of the trustee, the administrator, the executor. So for those that are new to the call, what we're talking about is the research and recusal construct in creating of trusts called the SESTA KV to create a number of trusts that they then use to deprive us of our rights and to control us and to extract our energy and to keep us where we are. Now, those three trusts we have gone through relate to three papal bulls created, the, the first one being uh, the first testamentary trust in history, Pontifex um, Romanus in 1455, the second being Attorney Regis in 1481, and the third being Convocation in 1540, 1537. There is some confusion because all three of those bulls sadly have been uh, corrupted and the English versions we have are almost certainly not the originals, but the date seems to be around 1537-1540 for the third. Now these are the three testamentary trusts that have conveyed the property claimed under the uh, papal bull Unum Sanctum in 1302 into three trusts that effectively hive off uh, real property, property of the land, into Pontifex Romanus, then hive off personal property into Attorney Regis, the second crown, and the third into uh, Convocation, of the third crown. And so when we look at these, third, these three Sester KVs, we see the first being the one that deprives us of our name and our beneficial entitlement of the higher estate. We see the second Sester KV being the uh, conversion of our uh, the birth record of our parents converted then into a promissory note and a bond and the third being the conversion uh, or the uh, hiving of our soul uh, into a third sister KV. Now it seems extraordinary to say these things, not the least of which to talk about a third sister KV claiming our soul. And I know a lot of people would say that these things are outrageous, that these things are disinformation, they have no grounding whatsoever. But when we talk in a moment about some extraordinary research in relation to the City of London and exactly what was put in place, I hope those on the call and those that listen will, will see that there is quite some truth to this. So what has been a difficulty is understanding who is in fact uh, operating in the different roles within the court in the nature of the SESTA KV. And part of that confusion has been this um, issue over the last few weeks where there seems to be some competition between different remedies. And I'm referring to this when...